So I'm here to introduce somebody that I, ha I don't know and I have never met. <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, uh, Titi Tapani was supposed to do it, and I guess he was not able to meet it, and here I am. <laughs> uh, and these, these are the remarks prepared by her, so I'm just going to read them. Uh, so it says, I'm honored and delighted to present this award to Ditanjali Rao, a scientist, innovator, author, and a student of science, technology, engineering and math. She is a South Asian American girl who is deeply passionate about inspiring youth through science. What's new about South Asians, right? South Asian and science hand in hand. You know, just, a, just a factoid. The South Asian Indian Americans make about 1% of the population in America. But they are 10% of all the university professors in engineering and sciences and business tools. So we have 10 to 1 advantage in science and businesses. So Ditanjali's love of science and her innovations are grounded in a passionate desire to help people. When she was younger, hmm, when she was younger, she became deeply concerned for the children in Flint, Michigan, who were exposed to lead in their, who were exposed to lead in their drinking water. Of course, yeah, many were and continue to be concerned. But Ditanjali, using the latest research in carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotube sensor technology, wanted to solve the problem. She invented Tethys, 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 <laughs> an instrument that by detecting lead, yeah, contamination allowed preventive action and saved lives. And this is, this is why I was a little bit stepped in. Ditanjali invented this vital technology when she was only 11 years old. So we talked about her being younger. <laughs> yeah. That was five years ago, and now at 11, 16, Ditanjali has a dozen more innovations to her credit, including Epion, a device for early diagnosis of prescription opioid addiction using genetic engineering, and kindly an anti-cyberbullying service using artificial intelligence and natural language processing. At 16, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, all of her diverse inventions express in, in common is her drive to change, the, change and develop the world. She doesn't stop there. Yeah, Ditanjali uses her superpowers to inspire others to innovate, empowering girls and women globally. Yeah, and uh, and her optimistic uh, through her optimistic uh, presence and uh, optimistic and inspiring presence. Yeah, she, yeah, she reaches out uh, to students around the globe, sharing her knowledge to help other students take their ideas into the real world. Yeah, during every speech, she calls on her audience to find a mentee to support them, to help them to grow their particular passion. She actively solicits new innovators into the world of STEM. Ditanjali motto: find that one thing that you want to change and change it. Innovation, Ditanjali says, will Continue, continue to drive change and develop the world. It doesn't need a big R&D budget and lots of resources. It needs a genuine drive and motivation to make a difference in our community. Dizanjali has been named Time, Time's top young innovator and the kid of the year and one of the Forbes 30 under 30 in science and has won many other honors. But what sets her apart in the end is that she uses science to inspire kindness. She sees science as a force for good in a world where people aren't judged by, this, by the color of their skin or their gender and even how old they are. Throughout my career, I have always felt that we should invest in the younger generation, if we want to change the world. 
you know, Ditanjali Rao is truly a leading voice in this, you know, gen in this uh, next generation. <laughs> and now please welcome our last honorary of the evening, dear Ditanjali Rao. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone here for inviting me and first of all for honoring me with this award and thank you for that fantastic introduction in that video as well. Um, I actually did not know that video was happening so I was, you know, I was like, they asked me for pictures and I was like, Okay, I don't know what they're gonna do with this, but that's what they did with it apparently. Um, but before I start off, I also wanna thank a couple of people who are the, so, actually more than a couple of people, who are the sole reason that I am on the stage right now. Um, I wanna start off by thanking the organizers of this fantastic event and everyone involved with the Asia Society for all of their hard work in putting this together. This has been an incredible night for me as well. Um, along with that, another huge thank you and big congratulations to the other two awardees for their incredible work and you know for being a big inspirations for me to continue my path continue my journey on whatever I'm passionate about from here on out um, beyond that I want to thank everyone else who have helped me out on my path starting with the people who took a chance on an 11 year old with a dream and no real way to get to it um, so all the experts, all the mentors out there who started with me since day one, helped me out with every single thing that I was passionate about and kind of said, hey, you know, you take the lead, we'll follow you. Um, those are the people I want to give a huge thank you to. I also want to give a huge thank you to my parents as well for all their support and making me the person who I am today because hey, I'm on the stage. Um, and most importantly, I want to give a huge, huge thank you to each and every single one of you here um, for listening to everyone's stories here, um, especially mine, and you know, just kind of enjoying the night and eating food, which is my favorite part of it. Um, but to give you a quick introduction of myself, which, again, did not know that video was happening, um, but my name is Gitanjali Rao. I'm 16 years old. I'm a junior in high school. Um, I'm an innovator and a STEM promoter, but the most important part is I'm a junior in high school so what that means is I have to leave at 6 a.m. to go take a physics test tomorrow um, but beyond that what started us this humble journey of having fun with science and technology and art and trying to solve problems led to something that I like to call this new responsibility I now share my process of innovation with students across the world and today I'm fortunate to have connected with over 60,000 students globally and still counting um, and the interesting thing is I learn from them more than they learn from me and I hope to bring together this innovation movement and influence a K through 12 curriculum that focuses on problem solving and innovation and changes what we know as normal in our current education system. And I recognize it's a daunting task, but I have the right support and all the people here can make that happen. So now the biggest question that I get is you're 16. You could have taken a lot of different paths. Now why innovation and why did you do it at such a young age, right? Um, the biggest thing is we're living in these interesting times. Newer technologies are shaping our future every single day. And without any real application to them, all of these technologies that we're hearing about are simply buzzwords. 5G, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, all buzzwords without real application to them. So in other words, not only are these technologies powerful by themselves, but they're coming together in ways that no one has ever seen before, right? And these are ways that we couldn't conceive just a generation ago, and that's the important part. The optimism is that all of these technologies, when used the right way, free us from the mundane and allow us to focus on solving, frankly, hard problems with hard solutions as well. Now, as fascinating as the future looks and all the choices that we have right in front of us, I'm here to talk about something more simple, and that is taking a step back and letting something drive our work that we never really thought of before. And what that is, is kindness. Recognizing and empathizing with problems around us and trying to solve them through interesting ideas. And what that means is innovation in our daily lives and not necessarily using the latest technology out there, but using whatever is available right in front of us. Now the biggest misconception that I have faced, um, and I'm sure everyone else here has faced, is that innovation and science and early education and any sort of field, right, it has a name, a face, an age, or a race to it. But the only specification that it has is a personality. Innovation has a personality, and one th what that is is one that's driven on this combination of empathy and creativity. As long as you can do both, anyone can be an innovator. Now the involvement of everyone, no matter their age, where they are, or the skill sets that they have, coming up with solutions to tackle some of the biggest problems in society is more important than ever. 
Our generation is growing up in a place where we're seeing problems that have never existed before. And innovation isn't an option. It's a necessity, right? And many students are raising their voices. We're you know, coming out from what people thought wasn't possible. But we're increasingly seeing a bigger group of people using their hands, building ideas and impacting the future at large. Innovation doesn't have to be restricted to the academia and research and universities and organizations. It can be everyone. Now we're looking for a world, one that everyone wants to live in, right? We keep talking about this notion of a sustainable world, but what does that really mean, right? And with a lot of students that I work with, the biggest thing that I like to tell them is that a sustainable world is what you make it. And I'm proud to say that I failed more times than I've succeeded in doing that, right? Failure should no longer be stigmatized. It shouldn't be something we're held back by. We shouldn't be held back by an A on a math test, per se. And that's why I'm not going to do well on my physics test. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Um, but beyond that, you know, it's, it should be encouraged, especially for youth as well. And I think the biggest thing that people don't recognize is as a kid, I'm here on the stage because I'm a kid. Because now's the time to try new things, to learn new things, when I have the opportunity to fail without anything to lose. And I think that's an important message to say to every other kid out there who thinks that failure is something that's wrong, but instead it's something that's right. And it took a while, but I'm happy to say that I failed more times than I've succeeded. Now before I end this off, you saw this um, in the introduction as well, so I'm going to make that one request again. My request is to support folks like me through sponsorships, internships, mentorships, but most importantly, friendships. Youth have the power to change the future, to create a sustainable world and environment, and I'm proof of that. And my challenge to you is to say yes. Take that one opportunity to say yes. If a student asks to work with you, say yes. If a student has a question for you, say yes. If a student writes an email to you, take a second to respond back to that email. Your support does make a difference, and I can say that from personal experience. And last but not least, I hope by being up on the stage and accepting this award, I'm representing all girls, all youth, and most importantly, all Asians here today. Remember to share that talent that you have with others. And even if we collectively bring a smile to one other person, we've made a difference because each and every single one of us is a game changer. Thank you for your time.